the first thing we want to talk about is apostolic definition. Okay, the word apostle in the scripture is not some high-level papal authority, governmental, blah, blah, blah. The word literally means a sent one, okay? But because in the passage that we he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the key verse is not verse 11, it's verse 12. Why did he give these gifts? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all come in the fullness of the Son of God unto a perfect man, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So verses 12 and 13 are so crucial to understanding how these gifts work. These gifts were not given so that somebody could stand on a stage with a microphone and receive a big offering. No, they were given for the purpose of equipping the saints. Okay, so when we look at the definition of apostle or apostolic, it's a sent one who sends, okay? Because our goal is not to just be sent in the authority of Christ to represent the kingdom of heaven on earth, but it's to also equip others to be sent. Okay, so it's the sent one who sends. All right, and so this, this definition is essential because what we're talking about is not so much around the individual. We're talking about the quality of Christ that needs to be in the church in order for the church to be expressing Jesus on the earth in his fullness. Okay, so we're talking about apostolic essence and not so much about the apostolic individual, although that's a, important and we can talk about that at a later time. If you believe you're called to be an apostle or to walk in apostolic gifting, you know, we want to celebrate that. We want to equip you for that, but we also want to do so in a way that doesn't minimize the essence of Christ in the church, the apostolic essence that we are a sent body of people, a sent community with the ability to raise up and send others. All right. So where are we sent from? Well, first of all, we're sent from heaven and earth. The scripture says heaven to earth. We're, we're sent with the full anointing of heaven. Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. You go, therefore, and make disciples. We're sent from heaven. The scripture says that we are raised up and seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that you and I, our true citizenship is in heaven. So we are representing God's heavenly purpose on the earth. Okay, and that means that we actually are people that are seeking to establish heaven on earth, that Jesus taught us to pray, let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, and so we are those who are carrying heaven to earth. But here's how we do it is we receive the heavenly blueprint. What does God want to build in your city? What does God want to build in your family? What does God want to build in your workplace? What does God want to build in your personal life? That we want to see God's blueprint for your church, the ministry that you're leading, and we want to be able to actually turn that blueprint into reality. So we're talking about being carrying a blueprint into building. And that's why in Destiny Finder, we've actually captured the best we could a, a, a substitute word for the word apostle as a builder. Okay, it's somebody who sees the blueprint of heaven. They assemble the right people and resources to bring that heavenly vision into reality on the earth. Okay, so this is the first aspect of the apostolic definition. The second one is that we're sent with the full authority of Christ. He said, all authority is given to me, you go therefore. And so we have this call to make disciples of individuals, but also to disciple structures of society, to bring the heavenly vision of God to influence and to shape the, the different aspects of involvement that we have in the earth, because each one of us is a heavenly ambassador. And so we are sent in the authority of Christ to make sure the influence of heaven is permeating the different aspects, our families, our neighborhoods, um, our sports and, and media stuff, our entertainment industry, that we need to be able to bring the kingdom of God into education and into business and all the aspects of, of the world around us. We are called to bring the full authority of Christ, and that requires a supernatural uh, vision and 
uh, methodology. It also requires a super practical focus. And that's why we're talking about strategies today. So we want to build something at the intersection of the supernatural and the super practical. And that's what Leaders Alliance is all about, is helping you to be that agent of the kingdom in that outcome. The third area we want to talk about being sent is being sent to build churches that actually make disciples, to build churches to build local expressions of Jesus, communities of Jesus that are reaching out, that are winning souls, that are enfolding those infant believers into the family, that are raising up those infant believers into, you know, childhood and spiritual childhood, into spiritual adolescence, into spiritual, you know, young adulthood, into spiritual fruitfulness as adults in Christ to bring about God's kingdom dynamics. So strategy number one is we build churches that transform the world. That's what we do. We build churches. We build ministry expressions, kingdom communities that actually empower individuals to be agents of the kingdom, to be sent ones that go out and bring the kingdom wherever they go. Now, let me just say about that, that you know, I'm excited about all the emphasis in our culture on transformation, but I want to say that I have a little bit of difficulty with the Seven Mountains teaching the way it's often presented, because it's presented in a way that uh, sort of evokes dominionism, that we're supposed to control or assert ourselves. No, Jesus said we're supposed to be servants. We're supposed to not influence the world by by dominance, but by influence. Okay, but also, I believe that one of the problems of the Seven Mountains teaching is it diminishes the importance of the church by just making the church one of the mountains. I don't believe the church is one of the mountains. The church is the bride of Christ. We are the pillar and ground of the truth. We are the, the source. So I like a, a different you know, analogy. I like the analogy of the tree that if there are seven branches on the tree or 15 branches on the tree, the church is not one of those branches. The church is the trunk of the tree. In other words, we draw the kingdom resources up, we raise up sons and daughters into maturity, and then we send them to bear fruit in all the branches of society. This is who we're called to be. Mm -hmm.